As our window cleaning industry realizes the increased efficiency from using rinse bars and swivels on window cleaning brushes, so the demand has increased for higher quality, more rigid water-fed poles. Rigidity is everything. So what is actually inside a water-fed pole to make it rigid? In this topic, I'm gonna to get a little bit geeky. I wanna show you 3K and unidirectional carbon fiber, Kevlar and fiberglass. But first, welcome to Reach It Workshop. This is what fresh carbon fiber looks like. You can see it's soft and pliable. Actually, it only stays this way for a short time. To keep it soft and pliable, we have to keep this in a commercial fridge and make our poles within three months of buying the raw material. Now, what makes carbon fiber really strong and rigid is cooking it at very high temperatures. But even letting it dry out, you can see it becomes very brittle like this. That was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so the carbon fibers we use are really, really fine, like smaller in diameter to a human hair. So here is carbon fibers compared to a hair from Harrison's head. Ow! Now to make a pole from carbon fibers as small as this, the fibers are arranged in bands that are called toes and are stuck together with resin. And then a whole lot of the bands are stuck together again to form like a sheet. So I'll try and show you here that how these bands, actually it's, because this is kind of sticky and stretchy, yeah? So you can see, oh, actually if I do that, I don't want to do it too much because I need to use this. So we can see here when it's dried out, you can see it turns into bands, yeah? So there, the bands are there and then it's all glued together to make a sheet. The carbon fiber that gives us maximum hoop strength or maximum longitudinal strength is called unidirectional. That means that all the fibers go in the one direction and the strength is in the direction of the fibers. Remember a water-fed pole is made up with five to eight layers of fibers. Now this is one sheet of carbon fiber. However, if we roll it around a metal tube, we get multiple layers of carbon fiber. And the more times we roll it around the mandrel, the more layers we have in our pole. So at the moment, I've got all of the fibers vertical. And if all of the fibers are rolled around the tube in a vertical direction, then the finished pole will be very rigid. But as all the fibers are aligned in the same direction, the hoop strength is ridiculously weak. You could actually break the pole by squeezing it with window cleaner's hands. Now, because the carbon fiber is really sticky and soft, it's actually stuck to the, it's not stuck on the pole, but it's stuck to itself. So there's this many fibers left. And if we were to roll these on the mandrel horizontally, so the fibers are running this way, yeah, we would roll it this way and like that. So a finished pole with the layout this way would be so strong you could drive a truck over it, but it would snap if you went to clean windows with it. So the design of a waterfed pole is perfected by using unidirectional fibers in a combination of layers and angles, both horizontal and vertical. And in fact, often at other angles like 45 degrees. Now by comparison, making a fishing rod is quite different. We may want a lot of flexibility in a fishing rod rather than rigidity. So fishing rods would have different layering plans. Now, if you wanted a flexible pole for cleaning, the material choice would be what is called omnidirectional fibers, like fiberglass. So this is what fiberglass looks like before it's cooked. Yeah? And you can see the omnidirectional weave of this fiberglass sheet. Now, we don't recommend this for water-fed poles because if you ever bought a fiberglass pole, you'd know what I mean. 100% fiberglass is 100% floppy. By the way, you can still find fiberglass poles in some stores, 
because fiberglass is a very cheap material, so it can appeal to customers with really low budgets. Now, the reason fiberglass poles are floppy is because the rigidity of omnidirectional fibers like this is 50% around the pole and 50% up the pole. So the best design for waterfed pole is for the layers to have less unidirectional fibers horizontally around the pole and more unidirectional fibers vertically up the pole to achieve maximum pole rigidity. Now, we have another problem to solve. These unidirectional carbon fibers are really brittle, so they're easily worn out when in contact with surfaces like concrete. So we need to de defend them. If the surface of the pole was all unidirectional, with the fibers going vertically up the pole, we have a risk of the carbon fibers getting caught on something and peeling. And we call this delaminating. You might also relate to this as splintering. So the way we defend against delamination is to use an omnidirectional outer layer like 3K, Kevlar, or fiberglass. Now remember, omnidirectional means the fibers are woven in two different directions. So you can see this with a close-up zoom of what 3K looks like as a raw material. It's also sticky and soft. It's beautiful, right? Now, if we look at this Kevlar and carbon fiber omnidirectional surface material, it's even more obvious about how that omnidirectional looks like. The Kevlar is gold and the carbon fiber is black and they're woven 50% horizontally and 50% vertically. Now by adding these materials to the outer surface of a pole, we stop the splintering of the unidirectional fibers that might be under the surface. So, how can you apply this as a window cleaner? How can you use this information to help you buy a water-fed pole off a photo on an e-commerce site? Well, actually you can't do much with it because you can't tell the layout of the layers and manufacturers really just don't give out their recipes. Asking a technical question about pole manufacturing and layers and unidirectional, omnidirectional and which materials is unlikely to give you an answer that you can rely on. Mostly, you'll get smoke and mirrors. What we do want you to take away from this workshop is that you're now aware that there are a whole variety of materials and layering plans that can be used to make a pole higher quality, that's more rigid, or more floppy and cheap. So we have other Reach It workshops on this topic. As we know, this one opens a can of worms and you'll likely have a load of unanswered questions from now on, right? <laughs> But if you have any questions which you'd like answered, leave a comment below in the YouTube channel and we'll answer as quickly as we can on the Q&A Fridays and later we'll prepare a ReachIt workshop for your training manual. If you prefer podcasts, search ReachIt workshop on Apple or Spotify and this script of this video is also available as a PDF in the blog article section of futureofcleaning.com for you to add to your training manual. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next ReachIt workshop.